Welcome back, friends. Today, let's go to look on the introduction on the topic of hybridization. As in the previous period, we discussed the, on the concept of um, valence bond theory. Now, according to the valence bond theory, we said that the atom can only form bond if it has half filled orbitals. Now, let's consider one atom of carbon and Taking an example of carbon, we are considering how many bonds can it form. And then from there we shall discuss how hybridization occurs and its mechanism and the features or characteristics of hybridized orbitals. So consider the typical bonding pattern of carbon has an electronic configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2px1 and 2py1. So according to this electronic configuration, Carbon has two unpaired electrons, which is Px and Py electrons. Now, if you if 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 you are considering this electronic configuration, if you went only with this idea of atomic orbital, that is valence bond theory, it will seem that carbon can only form two bonds. That is because it have on, it has only two half filled p orbitals. But carbon always form four bonds, and we know this from our all of organic chemists. If you don't remember your all of organic chemists, you remember like this again in your advanced level organic chemists. So what account for the fact that carbon has a ability to form four bonds instead of two bonds? To account for the known structure of methane, that is CH4, carbon has formed four bonds with hydrogen. So it makes sense to assume that carbon atom has four equivalent energy atomic orbitals. So if the normal carbon atom has two empty or two half field orbitals, now where are the two half field orbitals comes from? Such a set of orbitals can be obtained by mathematically combining the carbon's 2s and 2p orbitals. This mixing of atomic orbitals to form special identical orbitals for covalent bonding is called hybridization. And these four new orbitals are called sp3. It is pronounced as sp3, not sp cubic. However, the three is written as the uppercase, but I mean, is written as cubic, but it's, it's not pronounced as cubic. It is pronounced as sp3 orbital because they are Because they are formed from 1, 2s, and 3, 2p orbitals. Now, by definition, hybridization is the theoretical mixing up of orbitals, having different energy and shape, to obtain orbitals of the same energy and shape. So, for example, here, 2s orbitals have different energy and shape from 2p orbitals. However, hybridization makes them to have the same energy and the the same shape so hybridization is the term suggests hybrid means it occur from mixing hybridization increases combining power of an element or it increases a bit of an element to form covalent bond so the properties of energy of the new hybridized orbital are average of the original and hybridized orbital thus for example sp hybridized orbital will have properties which are in between of the S and P orbitals. And the hybridization is used in explaining the bonding properties and the shape of molecules. Hybridized orbitals are named based in the type and number of orbitals which are involved in hybridization. For example, if we are saying that it is SP3, means one S orbital have been mixed with the three P orbitals. If it is SP2, means one S orbital has been mixed with the 2p orbitals. Now we have some points to note here. Firstly, not necessary for hybridization process to be accompanied with excitation of electron. Although some hybridization do, we shall see later on the process of hybridization and how it occurs in different atoms. So some of the hybridization include excitation of electron to higher energy level, while other hybridization they do not include excitation of electron. And the second point is that not necessarily for orbitals with excited electron 
to be involved in the hybridization. So sometimes orbitals with the excited electrons, some of them they can be not included in the in the mixing or in the process of hybridization, and they can be left with the single electrons. Now let's let's jump to the rules or some of the common principles of hybridization in the covalent compounds. The first principle is that orbitals of a central atom only undergo hybridization. So as the definition suggests here that central atom is an atom in a molecule or polyatomic ion that is bonded to more than one another atom. For example, in ammonia, nitrogen is the central atom because nitrogen is bonded to three hydrogens. For example, in methane, carbon is the central atom because it is bonded to four hydrogen. But those peripheral hydrogen, they don't bond to another atom except carbon. So that's why we are saying carbon is the central atom. So in any molecule or polyatomic ion, a central atom is the one which is bonded by more than one atom. So only that central atom is the one which undergoes hybridization. Other atoms, they don't undergo hybridization. So for example, in ammonia, all three hydrogen atoms are bonded to nitrogen, and hence the nitrogen atom is the central atom. So by this rule, we have hybridization of of hydrogen. We have hybridization of we have no hybridization of hydrogen, but of nitrogen. If you are asked about hybridization of ammonia, that means you are actually asked about hybridization of nitrogen atom. So, for example. If you ask about uh, hybridization, maybe in methane, means you ask it about the hybridization of carbon because carbon is the central atom in, in methane. And sometimes some of the molecules like ethene can have two central atoms. For example, ethene has two carbon which are bonded to the peripheral hydrogen atoms. So if you ask it about hybridization, means you are asking about the hybridization of one among the carbon atoms which are bonded to other atoms. The second principle or the second the second law is that only valence orbitals can be used in hybridization. Only valence orbitals means inner shells are not used in hybridization. For for example, if an atom has three shells, means only the the third shell can be used in hybridization. Other shell cannot be used in hybridization. And the last principle that the orbitals of almost the same energy can be mixed to form hybridized orbital. So there should be very little difference in energy between orbitals mixing to form hybridized orbital. For example, if you are mixing S and P orbital, or if you are mixing SP and D, e, SP and D orbitals, these orbitals they have very small difference in energy and that's why it's easier to mix them to get a hybridized orbital. So now, the fourth principle here, there are some of the explanations here, but those are the one which I've said here. The fourth principle, the number of atomic orbitals mixing together are always equal to the number of hybridized orbitals. So if we have one S orbital has been mixed with three P orbitals, means the number, total number of hybridized orbitals will be four. If we have we have one S orbital has been mixed with three, 3p orbital and 1d orbital means the total number of dies the orbital will be 5 and etc. And the last principle we are saying that during the hybridization the mixing number mixing number for atomic orbital is as per requirement. So bond formation sometimes requires 2, 3 or even more than those electrons. So, if the number of hybridized orbital required, they are the one which, which can be mixed. So, as all of the hybridized orbital they are used. And as you can see here, if you wish to form four hybridized bond, you need four atomic orbitals. So, to form four hybridized orbitals, you need, because you are starting with S, you need one S orbital. To form four hybridized orbitals, or if six hybridized orbitals are required, then six hybrid orbitals would be formed from six atomic orbitals. 
in other words number of orbitals orbital is equal to number of hybrid orbitals number of hybrid or hybrid bonds is equal to number of hybrid orbitals that is equal to number of atomic orbitals to be mixed so by definition hybrid bonds are covalent bonds whose bonding molecular orbitals resulted from hybridization of atomic orbitals so sometimes teachers can ask you on these definitions and now let's jump to the let's jump to the some of the points here it is orbital that undergo hybridization not electron and sometimes the above point are considered as a condition for hybridization these which have been mentioned here the five points which are the rules they are sometimes called the condition for hybridization and now in completing this part of introduction to hybridization let's discuss about the number of hybridized orbital form the characteristics of hybridized orbital characteristics the first one was conditions always in characteristics first the number of hybridized orbital form d is equal to the number of atomic orbitals that get hybridized we discussed it before then the hybrid orbitals have equal energy and shape then the third the hybrid orbitals form more stable covalent bond than pure atomic orbitals because they have lower potential energy than an hybridized orbital if you don't understand this we are saying that as the the energy of the orbitals is low means it will mix up and to form strong bond as compared to the orbitals or energy electrons with high energy that's that's because the lower the energy of an electron the near it is with the nucleus of an an atom the last condition here the hybridized orbitals are arranged in space such that there is maximum distance apart between them so that they have minimum repulsion between them repulsion between them and therefore giving stable arrangement of orbitals so hybridized orbital they stay as far as possible and in the next video we shall go to see about the types of hybridization and this where most of the teachers they ask questions so what i can say here is that stay with me subscribe my channel and we shall meet later i am dr mlelo i am dr mlelo operating these periods from chems and biology and the uh, anodi amli he will bring to you with the mathematics and the physics so subscribe my channel for more and more updates thank you